Hey guys, welcome to another video in the basic Linux sysadmin course. Uh, this is where it starts to get fun. I'm going to show you two of the awesome features on the Linux shell. Uh, well, it's a Unix feature too, and Unix really invented this in the early 70s. Um, there are two shell features that make the shell so incredibly powerful and that make Linux and Unix as a result so incredibly powerful. And that are the reason we are learning everything on the shell in the first place, or one of those reasons. Okay, these two concepts are called pipes and input and output redirection. Okay, so pipes are very simple. Basically, you call some program. Let's say it's called program one. It doesn't matter, this isn't a real program, it's just an example. And then the pipe character and then another space, and then program two. Now the pipe character is the character on a US keyboard layout. If you hit shift, it's the character above your enter key. Now program one, pipe program two. What does that do? Well, program one has some input and some output. And the pipe takes the output from program one and feeds it into program two as the input. Now we'll cover this in just a second. First, what's useful to understand is input and output redirection itself. So if I have some program, and let's say it's called echo, and I echo back, uh, hello world, ah, we'll do it without that. What it does is it simply writes whatever I give it back out to me. Well, it's writing it back out to me because that's standard output. Standard output is the shell. So you've got standard input. I'm typing from my keyboard. And standard output is the shell here, you can see. There's another kind of channel for each process. So the echo process is just a program. Any program is a process. So anything that's running has three channels. One is standard input. It takes input from somewhere. It could be a file, could be your keyboard, could be the network, and it has output somewhere. Could be a file, could be the network, could be your shell. In this case, it's the shell. There's only one other kind, and that is standard error. And standard error is, for example, in this case, also the shell. But this is actually a different kind of output than this. This is normal output. This is error output, right? It's throwing us back an error and saying, I have no idea what you mean. So working with this idea, there's these three file description, I'll just write them into echo so we have them here on the screen. Standard in actually is, let's say, uh, your keyboard, but it has a number attached to it. It's zero. Just stick with me for a minute. Standard out is one. Oops. Uh, I'll, there'll also be a tapping course later. And I'm joking. Oops. And... Standard error has the file descriptor 2. Okay, so just so you can get the terminology straight, I know it's a little confusing. Every process on a, that's running uh, or being run by the Linux kernel has three channels, standard out, standard in, standard error. These channels each have numbers that correspond to them. Standard in is 0, standard out is 1, Standard error, error is two. You know, if you say error enough times, uh, you start thinking that you're crazy. Okay, now that we've covered that, if we want to redirect, let's say the output, let's say we want to say echo, this should be in a file. <laughs> I'm not even going to edit that out because it's funny. Well, this isn't in a file. We don't have any files here. Well, we do have some files, but let's say this should be in a file called uh, some file. What we can do is, well, we want standard out to be different. We don't want it to be on the shell. We want it to be in a file. So here we go. The greater than sign 
one, which is the file descriptor for standard out, greater than sign, and then let's say uh, some file.txt. Now we list, and there it is. If we cat some file, you can see this should be in a file. By default, there's actually a shortcut for this. Um, if you say echo this, you don't even need that one, because if you use output redirection, by default, it's going to take standard out and redirect it to that file. So if you just use the greater than sign, that'll do the exact same thing. So And then let's cat the file again and see what happened. Oh my god, I can't. There we go. Well, what happened? It's strange, right? So we echoed something, redirected it into that file. So this redirects redirect, and the one is standard output, into some file.txt. It creates the file. You saw we didn't have the file there before, but now it's there. And it writes the line we gave it in there. Now we do that again. What happened? It, it overwrote what was in that file. That's really important to remember. The classic newbie Linux person's mistake is to write some script or something where they have some output redirection and use this symbol, let's say in a log, and then every log message they write is the only one in the file because every time they log using a single greater than sign, it overwrites what's in there and just puts in what you're giving it in that command. So there's a way to avoid that. Let's say uh, this should be line two. Two greater than signs result in, it, it's, it's appending, so it creates or appends the file. You can still use this if you're not sure if the file's there already. It'll create the file if it's not there. But if you've already got something written in that file, this will avoid overwriting it. It will simply create a new line and then write the output there. Good, so that's that's redirecting standard output. So you can do it either with a one, but it's not necessary, or a shortcut of, you can see, just the greater than sign or two of them to append. Now let's talk about how to redirect that second channel that is standard error, right? So the file descriptor is two, so we can write, um, we'll get a long listing of some file, which should look like this list output. You don't need the TXT. So there you go. You can see it wrote that standard output into our file. Well, let's see what happens if we mess up the name. We're trying to list a non-existent file and then write the output of that into the same list output file. Well, hold on. It's coming back on the shell. And if we cat the list output file, it's not in there. Well, why? Because this is not normal output. Like I said before, this is error output. And so even though both standard output and standard error print to the shell, as you can see here, it's actually handled as a different type of output. So you need to specify that you want to take the error output and write it into that file. So for example, the way to do that would be just very simply two, right? Because that's standard error. The file descriptor is two. And then we write it to, let's call it, um, you know, let's just call this error. You can see it didn't come back on the shell. Already a good sign. It's created the error file. And if we cat it, you can see there is that output. Okay, so that's some program. And then redirect standard output to create or overwrite a file redirect standard output to append or create a file and that's basically the same as doing this so standard out or standard error into some file okay so what if you want to use input redirection that is take some arguments for a program or some information from a program well we can do that too if we do create an email let's say Let's just quickly say 
Uh, this is the message text. There you go. Um, and then we want to send a mail using, let's say, the message text. Now, in real life, this is going to be something that like some other program wrote this to a file. Maybe it's a log file. Maybe it's something to do with security. And you just want to email it to, let's say, an administrator. Well, one of the ways you could do it is by saying mail with the subject of this is the subject. Um, is it M? No, it's the user. So to myself here, this is to the local user you want to mail it to. And here we go. The smaller than signs, you have greater than for output redirection and smaller than or less than for input redirection. So you can see if I do this, this will go off and try to send a mail. Oh my God, mail isn't installed on Ubuntu. Fail. Well, that's okay. Uh, but you can see this would call the mail program create a new message with the subject, this is the subject, send it to the user Dave, and then for the message body, take its input here from the, the message.txt file. Now, you can just think of these input and output things. If It's very simple to remember because you're just thinking of it as basically a funnel pointing in the direction that the information is flowing. So you can see here, output redirection is, here's, this is going to, result, this left side is going to result in some output, and this symbol is just a funnel, right, pointing in the direction where it's going to go. You're just funneling it into this, oh my lord, I am truly sorry for that. Well then, uh, funneling it into message.txt. The other way around, the funnel is pointing the other way, right? So this thing on the left is having something funneled into it, which is some information here in the file message.txt. So that's a really simple way to remember it. This thing points the way the information's going. Here, the information's going into the file. Here, the information's going from the file into this command on the left. Fairly simple. Now let's talk about pipes. Pipes are great. Pipes are one of the incredible inventions that allow, for example, on the Linux command line, they allow you to have incredibly small tools. So all these things like cat, uh, even things like mail, ps, which is to processes. Well, let's let's see, right? Um, ps, aux. These things all do one thing. This, for example, lists processes. I want to see all my processes, convert user IDs to user names, and show me processes that don't even uh, that aren't attached to a terminal or a TTY. This just vomits out a ton of text. It asks the kernel, hey, what's going on right now? The kernel says, oh, these are the things that are running. And this program just gives it back to me in a huge long list. I could scroll all the way up and give you motion sickness, but I won't. So there's just usually thousands of processes running. So very few human beings are gonna wanna look at this giant list and look for what they want. In other places, the solution would be, well, let's write some sorting functionality into the PS command, right? so that you don't have to see it all at once. Or let's write in some pagination into the PS command so that you can view all this output one page at a time. The genius of pipes are that they allow you to hook up the output of one command to the input of another command. So if I do this command again, but I want to paginate it, write down the command less. It will be your best friend for a lot of tasks on the system. This is a pagination command, which makes basically it just takes a ton of text, checks how big your screen is, and then outputs that sort of one screen full at a time. And you can see now I can very easily scroll up and down. I can use my page up and page down keys to slowly go through all these things. Uh, if you're in less, Q gets you back out. Okay, so what did this pipe actually do? Remember, this is the key above your enter key. So if you hit shift and then the key above your enter key, um, it'll print out a pipe character. So this command had some output. And this thing is literally a pipe that hooks up the output of this command to the input of this command. So this is taking the, what is this doing? It's taking the output channel one from here and hooking it up to the input channel, zero, here. 
right? So we're talking about those standard in, standard out, standard error things. Standard in is zero. Standard out is one. And so this just takes file descriptor one and plugs it into zero of the next command. It's fairly simple, but what it, the genius of this is it allows you to have very small sharp tools. All these pr uh, all these command line tools in Linux are generally very small. And the pipe allows you to hook them and wire them together to get exactly what you want, when you want it, with very little fuss. You can hook together lots of different things. Um, for example, you could, uh, this is pointless right now, but for example, uh, sorting, making things unique. Um, you can hook lots and lots of, uh, and then maybe looking for something. You can see this this filters down the original data a huge amount, and you can get very, very specific. This is extremely useful, and a lot of things on Linux are built from this concept. So there you go. You now understand input and output redirection based on standard in, standard out, and standard error, and how you sort of hook these things together. You understand piping and how that's sort of shorthand for doing some more complicated input and output rewiring. And hopefully you can start getting a feel for how useful this can be um, in constructing larger things that are running on your system. I'm going to go a little bit more into depth on practical uses for these things in later videos. Input and output redirection are just incredibly useful for, I mean, especially you see it in places like, obviously, logging, right? So all of your logs are really just some process that logs its output by redirecting it into a file. And what I'm going to show with the pipes is that it's an incredible tool that lends itself naturally to filtering, searching, and sorting data. And there'll be a whole video on that a little bit later, because that's one of the things that you're going to do, spend a lot of time doing um, in Linux. If you're doing anything interesting, complicated, and or sysadmin-y, is that a word? It is now. Great. So I hope this gives you a foundation in these two really, I mean, they're simple concepts, but I hope that I've been repetitive enough and have gone into enough depth to really cement these into your brain. They can be a little bit counterintuitive at first, but just you really have to know these things to understand the larger system because a lot of the abstractions in Linux are really grown out of very simple ideas like this. And if you understand this, you'll have a really easy time understanding the rest of Linux and how things work. All right, I'll see you in the next video.